everybody what is going on well it's been about a year and a half since I did some of these videos and I can't leave you guys hanging I got to get this thing completed why because it's up for sale seventeen thousand five hundred dollars is what it is for this food truck being complete ready to go but I'm gonna tell you guys something the most important thing that comes to a food truck or a food trailer is the water system all right I don't care how complex how big stainless steel everything else that you got but if you don't have a water system that is running perfectly with the filters, uh, a two-way hookup, all those things, fresh water tank, gray water tank, then you're, you're, you're just all looks, okay? The water system is number one. So if you're going out and you're gonna buy a food truck or a food trailer, take a look at their water system, all right? So this is gonna be a very complex video and it's gonna be very much in detail. And you guys already know, I explain things very much in detail because I take it as if the other person on the other side that's watching this knows nothing about any mechanical skills so i want to be able to explain it so that that person can also do the job themselves or they can have somebody help them do it and they have some type of knowledge so if you guys are experienced in any of the things that i've done and you put comments on there and hey you talk too much you, you're describing too much i'm only doing that because I'm, there's a lot of people that are out there that know nothing about nothing and believe me there's a lot of people out there that know nothing about nothing and really think they know everything all right so let's go ahead i'm going to explain this whole system to you from beginning to end i'm going to get out of these clean clothes and put some dirty clothes on because we know how that works so go ahead and grab your coffee grab your soda grab your popcorn grab your chips this is going to be a very long in-depth video on how to hook up your fresh water system from either a fresh water hose or using a secondary power pump, which is what I use, a battery operated electrical little tiny battery powered pump, water pump, okay? And you might wanna think about that because certain events, hey, something just might happen, all right? And you wanna be able to have running water to, to be able to you know, continue to sell your food or whatever you can sell if your generator or your power goes out. Either way, you gotta have running water, all right? So I'm gonna show you that and also how to hook up any other appliances that require water from your fresh water tank or your fresh water hose. So come on everybody, let's do this. You know how this works, come on. So if you if you already watched me hook up the actual drains to the sink basins, then you got a pretty good idea of what's gonna be happening here. All right, so as you can see, I have my faucet here that's gonna be run, running my hand wash sink here basin, and then my wash rinse sanitize is going to be over here. I, you're gonna be having two different faucets regardless, okay? So what I did is I actually went with uh, the longer now, longer uh, necks here for this one. So this one will share it with my hand washing and also my wash basin. And then this one right here is going to be running the rinse and sanitize to fill those up and also rinse and so forth. All right, so you're gonna be having that regardless. All right, you're gonna have two faucets. So what I'm gonna do is this one's already done and I just wanted to get a, a feel for how that was gonna be. So I'm gonna show you guys how to get this one done. So you're gonna need a wood bit, okay? And this one right here, that is a, a one inch. So, and then what you wanna do is you wanna just compare that to, you know, this actual little pipe thread that comes through from your, your nozzle uh, right there, okay? Okay, inside of your faucet, there'll be some little twist, uh, okay, threaded twist nuts that go on there and also some rubber washers. There and there. Now I can go ahead and drill these through. Oh, also most important, you want to look underneath because you may have some supports under there, like some two by fours or something that you had to support this uh, this bench top up. So got to take a look at that. got that I can go underneath and take your little rubber gasket goes right on top and then just screw them up to tighten this down on each side all right just to let you see the underside that's that little nut just tighten it down by hand uh, as tight as you can with your hand and that's good enough okay 
At this point, you should already have your fresh water tank here. This is a 30 gallon fresh water tank. Below is a 42 gray water tank for your waste. Uh, you gotta have 10 gallons or more for your waste tank, your gray water tank, just because of ice that may melt, anything else that may get poured into your gray water tank, which is below. So uh, just remember that, 10 gallons or more. Okay, so here we go. Let's don't get scared, uh, all right? <laughs> I just want you to get a, a good visual. None of this is glued, okay? It doesn't have any primer on it. As you can see, you don't see any purple on here and you don't see any orange glue or cement. All I did was a mock. This is just a mock, okay? And that's my little battery uh, electric water pump. And I'm gonna explain all this as we go. This is a four gallon Bosch or Bosch, either one, uh, electric hot water heater, okay? Just take a look at that real quick, okay? Right there, four gallon, okay? And that's the amount of watts. And you wanna pay attention to all this stuff because your generator may not be able to power all of these things. You gotta have at least a nine or a 10,000 watt generator to run uh, a, a pretty good food truck, you know? Because a lot of this stuff requires a lot, of, a lot of power. All right, so here we go. What I have here, uh, this is all pipe thread okay so when you get your tank you're gonna need that little knockout right there that's an inch and a half and you want that because uh, you can hook you can simply pull that plug out and fill your freshwater tank with water uh, a lot faster okay just by pulling that out and then put the holes in there and then here I have a this is a half inch thread okay and this just goes up to an elbow, and this is just a breather tube, is all that is, because your tank become pressurized or depressurized, and you don't want that. You don't want your tank to, to explode, you know, because of pressure going inside like a balloon. It won't, but it, you know, it could. You could get some leaks or it could crack it, or it could depressurize it because um, when this is sucking uh, from this pump, it actually just sucks it out, you know, just like a, just like a bag, you know, just, and you don't want that either, because it, it's just not good because it's starving for air so here we go half inch thread pipe thread and that goes into a plastic half inch uh, shutoff valve okay and that goes into a, a union joint okay you want that there so you can unhook that tank and clean that once a year because you know if you let these tanks set you know with a little bit of water and moisture inside they develop algae inside of them all right, so then that now, you can see that elbows up right there, okay? And it gives me the option now. Uh, right here, this is three quarter inch, okay? That's like something you would use, um, I don't know, on a, uh, a sink or outside your house, but a hose hooks up to this. This is hose thread. It is not the same as pipe thread, okay? And that's three quarter inch and that's metal, that's brass. So. You want that because you may feed your direct line from your outside water source directly to this and you may not even use your fresh water tank so you want to have that that's three quarter inch and then i went with the cpvc and i knocked it down to half inch because i wanted to go with half inch cpvc throughout my water line system here okay so that goes down now that will go into a t that's a t right there half inch and then you can see this shoots this way. And now it goes to our filter. This is a dual filter, okay? Uh, one is a sediment filter and the other one is a carbon filter for chemicals. You do not need this setup, all right? It just was a deal on eBay. All you need to have is a sediment or a car a sediment and carbon filter, just a single one. But if you wanna go this route, you can. And then this comes with a, a wrench okay that goes underneath slips under and then you just loosen them up and there's a rubber gasket that's inside there okay so this goes into a three-quarter inch thread okay so if you're using either galvanized pipe you can do this in three different ways everybody you can use galvanized piping throughout this whole thing which is great or you can use cpvc which is this tannish uh, yellowish tint plastic uh, pipe or you can use a these plastic lines, hoses. But again, you're gonna be needing T's and everything else. So 
just so you understand this. So here we go, let's keep traveling. And I also have another uh, Union uh, joint right here. So in case I need to unhook this right here and I don't wanna bother with that and take this part off, I can. Okay, so here we go. Feeding through, feeding through. And then here's another three quarter inch pipe thread CPVC that knocks down to a half of an inch. All right, so this part right here, this turn off, shut off valve, it's, it's, it's on an angle. Okay, and there's a reason why. I'll explain that in a little bit. So let's just keep traveling though. So that goes that way to that, that knockdown. Here I am again. Remember now, don't look at this right here. I can't, I can still move this out of the way because it's not, it's not glued in any way. Okay, so that goes into a T. And that T can either shoot up to this half inch shutoff valve and then go this way, or it can go down to this shutoff valve here, okay? And then that goes down, turn this a little bit so you can see it, into a, another T, or this can actually be an elbow. What I'm gonna put right here is a little drain line. So for the time being, I just put a cap on it, but it would be a threaded uh, drain line. Okay, so, and that goes into this half inch threaded, okay, barbed nipple. All right, and they sell these also at Home Depot. Okay, it's half inch to three eighths. Okay, half inch to three eighths. And this is a three eighths inner diameter clear hose that sucks into this pump. Okay, this is an electric pump for a battery. So I'm gonna have a toggle switch that turns this pump on or off whenever I'm at an event, if I don't have running water at the event. And then this right here pumps the water through here into another half inch to a 3 8 barbed plastic nipple again with a shutoff valve. And then up here to a T, oh, here we go, which then feeds to another T. This is my cold, cold water, okay, from the fresh water tank or the hose down into my four gallon hot water heater, electric hot water heater. Now here's my hot, hot water. Okay, this goes up and goes into a T because this goes to one of the faucets that I installed, hot water. And then this one here goes also into the other faucet of the hot water. Okay, and then them lines are just flex lines. They may not have braided metal, which is fine. And you can use the braided plastic ones. That's okay. But this is a half inch pipe, pipe thread that goes on to you can see right there, that's threaded, this half inch male CPVC, okay? So that's what happens there. So I think we got it. So why do I have these shutoff valves? Why do I got so many? Well, because there, I may get to an event where I can use a pressured line of water that just gets hooked right into that line right there. And then I will just shut that off because I don't want no water going in there. And that water will just feed all the way through here, through there, and I will shut that line off right there, and I will shut this line off right here, so it has nothing to do with this pump, okay? So that water will then feed, and it'll back stop right there, and it'll go, I'll open this valve here, and then the water will feed, well, it will try, will go, it'll try to go this way back to the pump, but it can't because I shut this off. And then that'll just feed the rest of my water system. So what if I don't have a, a pressured water line at an event? Well, simple. I just shut that off. That's okay, so no water comes spewing out of there. I turn that, open that up, make sure my 30-gallon uh, water tank is filled up, and then that water will feed, again, through the same system, right through here. And then what will happen is it will try to go up, but it won't because this is shut off. So it will be forced to go down and get sucked in to the pump, feed up to this line, and then this is open. It'll try to go this way, but it can't. It's shut off, and then goes to my water system, just like that. All right, so let's go ahead and get this glued up, but you guys got it. This is pretty much it. My hot water heater will be hooked up to that GFCI outlet right there. Wherever you got a bunch of water, you know what I mean, plugged in, that's where you want that right there. I should have another GF, uh, uh, GFI switch right there also, but I don't, okay? I put one right there. And that's where this little unit's gonna get plugged into. 
oh, I forgot to mention that this line right here, this T, uh, this one here will feed the all the way there, and then it's going to go down under the floor and then up underneath my fountain soda machine. Okay, so that line right there. Now, if I had a couple of things that required water, like a cappuccino machine or, or a hot chocolate machine, all I would simply do is that this nipple right here, this 3 8 barbed nipple, would just be a T, okay? So I would shoot it that way, or I would shoot it, you know, going all the way to the coffee maker, cappuccino machine, hot cocoa machine, either way. But you just T off of this right here with the barbed T's um, inner diameter, okay? do is disconnect these right here and get these all glued up okay so primer them and get the glue on them because uh, I don't want to get too confused and start tearing all this apart and then have so many small pieces around so I'm just gonna work my way from the tank uh, all the way this way through the filter but I'm gonna put my pipe tape on that half inch CPVC thread male end that's going into the tank it's important to know that everything that I have is going to be in straight lines, okay, until I get to that one shutoff valve just past the filter. Uh, that'll be on an angle. Uh, but for the time being, I can go ahead and glue all of these up uh, just by setting here. And then when I get to this part here, and this will be uh, have the, the, the plumber's tape on it. I'm just going to go ahead and screw that in there with that plumber's tape. And then I'll be able to just slide that in with the glue. And then I'll bond all, the, all of this all in one piece, one unit. So with the plumber's tape, it comes in two different sizes. Just what I had left over was this wide stuff. Uh, but just go ahead and, and just get that started. And just go around all of your threads. And like I say, I, I just stuff the slide, so you just want to be able to just go around and hold it. See, there, there. Just keep sliding off. That's okay, but I want you to see that. And then once it gets started, you go around twice. Okay? So once you go around twice, just go ahead and tear that off like that. And tuck that in like so okay now I'm ready to thread this into that hole right there on the bottom and that's where the channel locks are gonna come into play so I'm gonna hand tighten that as much as I can which is just a few threads in Once that's in there, go ahead and just tighten that down with the channel locks just a little bit more. You don't want to go too much because you don't want to break it. All right, so I disassembled most of this, but I have an idea of where everything's got to go. And what I said before is that you want a primer all the way around the edges on this. Okay, so typically just get one side, set it down, let it somewhat dry, and then go ahead and hit the other side. That way you don't get primer all over your fingers but if you don't mind that that's okay and you also have to get inside of where you plan on pushing that CPVC so get inside there too and it gives that it cleans it one and also gives the cement All right, so I don't want to get too far ahead of myself, so I'm going to just let this dry for about two minutes, and then I can go ahead and put on my cement. As you can see, I put some of this together already. I just want to give you a general idea of how to actually use this cement. You might want to use some gloves because, you know, you're going to get it on your fingers and you just have to get that cleaned off. All right, so what you want to do is you want to go around where you put that primer, okay, just like that. And then also into any type of hole where this is going to be going into, okay. So look at there. It's almost ready to drip off. And then what you want to do is you want to press that in until it stops. 
and then give it just about a quarter of a turn and that fills in any type of blemishes um, that may be in there and, and you know this cement will fill in you can see it just seeping out of the edge right there which is good and just hold that down for about 10 seconds and you want it to be around 60 degrees or warmer for this to be able to bond really good and then you know you don't want to use it until obviously the next day until this is all actually hard and you know it don't come off on your finger so now that you've seen that all I'm gonna do is just do the same thing with this right here on this now that I got this all glued up what I'm going to do now is work on that section right there so I'll just take it apart right there and then I'll get that all glued up and you can see it's all pretty much straight in line except for this one right here okay this line is on an angle why because it would end up running right into that so I just needed to kick it out just a little bit that way right there and that just goes to you know this pump right there it's not that big of a deal and then once I glue that up that'll be snug right against there and I'm just gonna go ahead and put um, you know a zip tie on there I just wanted you to see this part before I actually glued this up. Okay, so this is that far end with the shutoff valves. And how I was saying, this one here has to be kind of um, crooked, I guess. Like that. Okay, it's not going to be, you know, just straight up and down with the other shutoff valves. Uh, because it, I, it's the only way I can do it unless I put like a, an elbow here and then an elbow there. It's just It's just too many elbows. I figure, you know what, so what? It's just this, this is just the line right here that goes to my my pump. So I got my my three eight barbed end here, and then my three eight barbed end right there. And this is just going to be kinked on a slight angle. Now on the hot water heater, I went ahead and put my plumber's tape on there all the way around, and then go ahead and put this uh, CPVC threaded uh, half inch onto that remember it's got a rubber grommet on the inside i still put that plumber's tape on there so i just don't want no leaks down here and then what's going to end up happening is that i'm going to go ahead and, and cement that in there glue that in there but i'm going to kink that just a little bit that way because i need my cold water line which is that flex line that's going to hook into there and i don't want it to you know be bumping into this cpvc line so that'll just come right around this way here so i'm just going to kink that this way or you can go that way either way now I'm at the filter and I went ahead and used the blue plumbers tape around the three-quarter inch CPVC fitting okay on both sides and I tightened them down as much as I could like I said you don't want to go too much but you don't have to go uh, stingy on this so I went around around four or five times around that because I don't want that to leak here or there now, since I, since I have this here, I, I'm going to go ahead and put my filters in. But it's important to know that when you have these, uh, these little rubber grommet gaskets that are in there, you want to use some type of uh, lubricant. So this is a Sanitary Patrol uh, gel lubricant. Okay, and it's, move, and it's made for around food products. So if you're going to be getting in a food truck or a food trailer, this is a product that you're going to need, especially if you have slushing machines or any type of moving parts. And it says right in there, um, coming in contact with food products and impervious to water. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put just a little bit around this seal right here. So, you know, so it just preserves that and it doesn't dry out in time. Since I'm doing this, I want to just show you here with this wrench. So it just fits right on there and then it just turns and then loosens that up. And then you can go ahead and then take that off. Spin it all the way around and then go ahead and put your filter in. Since I went ahead and put the filters in and I already got these already glued uh, or cemented, I'm just going to go ahead and mount this bracket in here and then that's secured right to the wall. Uh, just I have everything all cemented or glued together just how I wanted it. But over here, as you can see, right, put my hand in here, I had to go up and over the tank. And there's a reason because that line, um, it's a 30 inch, that flex line, half inch by half inch. 
it was kind of like pushing down on this on this pipe and I didn't like that so I just wanted it to stay straight uh, as you can see that's a tight fit right there for my holes so I what I should have did is had that extend up just a little bit more but I could still get my holes on there so I'm not really that worried about that so you know just want to be mindful of that there and it's also best uh, for you to tighten these on these hoses before you actually um, glue these in before you cement these all together you just want to get these all nice and bound tight because last thing you want to do is just be tightening this down and next thing you know you crack this uh, CPVC because you're trying to tighten this down and hold this at the same time so if I were you I would go ahead and just put all these lines together here you know what I mean just so that rubber grommet that's on the inside catches it so no water leaks out of it there and then you can go ahead and hook these up to the faucets as these lines run up um the filter yeah the filters in place right there uh, as you can see i put a little support bracket right here okay that's a little support bracket just holds this half inch line you know from sagging so everything is nice and solid and nice and tight and this is that uh, shutoff valve that i had to put on an angle right here okay with that uh, 3 8 nipple and then that's going to hook in to that pump and that's what i'm going to hook up now uh, i need to run back up to the hardware store because I don't have any more little clamps, so I need to get the... Uh... Not to make it any more confusing, but here we go. All right, so there is my little pump, and I put two uh, self-tappers, quarter-inch self-tappers, down in the aluminum floor just to hold that little pump in place. This is just a tiny little battery that I am just pulled right out of my tractor, my little lawn tractor, just to show you how this system is going to work. And this right here is just a drain pan. Uh, when you go to fill this truck up, you want to open up this pressure release valve right there so it gets all the air out of there and just pushes it in here. When you see the water come out of there, well, that's full. And then uh, you can see I got my clamps all the way on, okay, there. And then that water line right there, that's what I was talking about, that T. And if you had a coffee maker, which I got a coffee maker up there, uh, you'll run another line. So I'm going to branch off into a T later on. And so this line runs all the way back and then goes down here and then just simply goes underneath the truck to the opposite side and comes up right here and it goes right into this line right here a 3 8 again uh, nipple into a half inch and this is a shutoff valve you recognize that right there because uh, a lot of your um, faucets and your toilets have these and that runs into another 3 8 here and that goes right up into the fountain soda machine. Okay, I think we got this. So the only thing I'm going to do now, oh, one more thing. Uh, I do have a tie strap, okay, on the front and back side. And see, I put this two by four and that just supports that tank so it doesn't slide and move all the way around. And I just put some eye hooks there. And way in here, if I can get in there. Yeah, right there, okay. And just a little ratchet, okay, just like that. Another thing you want to make sure you have one of or a couple of are these drinking water hoses, okay? This is 50 feet. Uh, it's good to have two of them, all right, because this is what you're going to have to have to even be approved to fill up your tanks, okay? The inspector is going to want to see that hose, so you got to have that. Um, just to show you this pump right here, I already got my negative wire hooked up. I'm just going to touch this positive wire right here, and then you'll see. Maybe. Okay. Just trying to push whatever water is inside of there. But you'll find out when you get your little pump uh, which side is the sucking and which one is the pushing. Uh, just hook it up to a little uh, gallon jug of water each one, each side, and then you'll know. All right. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and fill that tank up. Not fill it all the way up, just a quarter over the way. And then I'm also going to hook up my holes right there and see if I can fill up most of this water system without using the pump for now. All right, moment of truth. So as you can see, I went ahead and put some water in this tank here by simply taking this hose and putting it right into that fitting there. And then I reapply, I rehook the hose back up to my main and I'm just gonna turn this on, okay, slowly. I don't wanna turn it on too fast. Okay, I hear the water. 
Okay, there we go. You can hear it. It's all the way over here already. It's coming out my there and there. So I need to shut this line off here so that it does not feed out of there. And as far as here is concerned, that's all good. Uh, I'm waiting for my hot water tank to fill up. Filters are all full. Right now it's probably just trying to get out any air. As you can see, it's kind of gurgling. I can hear that, that's starting to fill up, so that's good. I open that valve up, I closed it. So now that I open that up, it allows the air to come out of the tank. And once I see water coming here, then I will stop. I will just shut that off. Okay. Go ahead and shut these off for right now. Okay, you can hear that tank, it's filling up. Should be water soon coming out. Yeah, there it is right there. Okay, so I will shut that off now. And this is now all filled, okay? All of the water system is full, okay? This line is full. I just need to address any type of leaks, okay? So everything looks good. So let me go ahead and take a quick gander. Well, here we go. What I went ahead and did as I wired up my toggle switch and that's just there for right now because I'm gonna wire that directly to the battery of the vehicle. And so there's the pump and I had to switch these lines around. Here I am telling you guys, make sure you get them the right way and I put them on backwards, I'm talking too much. Okay, so I got my lines on correctly. So here we go and I tightened that up so I don't have no more leak coming out of there. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn this switch on. This is kind of like a first time for me also, okay? I'm gonna tell you that because you're gonna see the water go into lines. Okay, so it's feeding. And I, I left that faucet on just so it would help. Look at that. We got running water, folks. So I'm gonna shut this off, the cold water line, and that pump should stop after all the lines are full with water. Uh-oh, I got a leak over here. Yep, I got a leak. I gotta figure that out right now, but it looks like uh, I need to tighten that more up in there and put some more pipe tape on there. You also want to make sure that these are nice and snug and tight and also these little top screws just go ahead and take a phillips screwdriver to all the screws and just tighten them down because i was noticing there was a little tiny leak a droplet coming out there so just want to make sure that that's nice and tight so let's go ahead and turn this on toggle switch now you'll know if there's a leak somewhere because that motor will just kind of just keep running every so often i mean and you just want to keep checking, all right? So what I do to check to see if there is, is obviously rub my finger across one of the hose lines. But this also works if you just take some tissue paper and just dab where all the joints are. And if it comes out wet, well then you know you got a leak going on right there because sometimes the condensation can build up from these hoses because it might be cold and your, your vehicle's getting warmed up and you'll feel water and you'll think that's a, a droplet or something coming out when it may not be, okay? It's just condensation. Okay, so I went ahead and I plugged in uh, my hot water heater and you can see the little red light is on and it has a control um, valve right there to be able to put the temperature at. And you heard the little pump come on and it will because it could be air still in the lines. Remember, this is still a, a new, new setup, okay? So let's turn that on. That's the hot water and that's the cold water, okay? Now remember, the more lines you run, uh, the more it's going to put on that little tiny pump. So just be wary of that. And back here, this is going to my uh, soda fountain machine. Uh, just made sure that was fake. You can see all the, the wetness back here. It'll dry up here in a couple hours. But uh, that's ready to go. But when I turn that valve on, because I don't have everything plugged in yet and everything not tightened up, water starts coming out of where the... The water is right there, that's the water. And I'm gonna be showing you guys how to do this, how to set one of these soda fountain machines up and all the appliances that are inside of this food truck. Okay, so we got our four sinks that are here and I still need to uh, caulk them in just to get them uh, you know, secured somewhat. And I may have to go ahead and put a screw on each, not each corner, but diagonally here 
and here just to hold that down and then I'll put the caulk down and I'll be using uh, stainless steel screws. All right. I hope these videos really guys help you guys out a lot uh, when it comes to, remember, number one thing, plumbing, water. When it comes to a food truck or a food trailer, that has got to be the number one thing going on inside here and that's got to be correct. I gave you guys, this is a setup that I'm going to use because I like to use a little battery operated pump on the side because it's worked for me in the past. All right, everybody. Remember, you know how this goes. I'm holding my phone right now, but we're still going to do this.